central Ukraine, the foundation of the country's economy and its industrial heartland. The main mining and metallurgical enterprises are concentrated here. 450 kilometers away from the capital lies Kamyansky, a small town of 240,000 people, each of whom is in danger. Here, on the outskirts of the city, hides a tumor, the growth of which has caused an ecological disaster. Prydniprovsky chemical plant was one of the first uranium ore processing facilities in the former Soviet Union. Now defunct, with broken windows, once it was one of the driving forces of the Soviet nuclear program. For more than 40 years, the plant produced uranium oxide for the entire Soviet Union. Those were the times when the dangers of radiation were tremendously underestimated and words like environmental safety were barely used. There are nine uranium processing residue storage facilities on the site of Prydniprovsky, the so-called tailings. They occupy an area of 2.5 million square meters and each requires proper supervision. For almost half a century of operation, these tailings have accumulated 36 million tons of radioactive residues that can be dangerous for hundreds of years. The end of the Soviet Union led to the cessation of all processing at the Prydniprovsky plant, which has become a dead monument to that era. However, very limited work was done to clean up the site, and the attempts to eliminate the effects of uranium processing were far too little. Ukraine has inherited terrible ruins, abandoned premises, and a pile of radioactive waste. In 2016, the European Union conducted an extensive radiation survey of the plant, which resulted in the creation of a dose rate map of gamma radiation. The colors of yellow spectrum indicate the areas where the radiation background is increased. The colors of red and burgundy spectra indicate the areas where the level of radiation is much higher and of far greater risk to people. Figures measured there show radiation at dangerous levels when compared to those on Khreshadik Street in the capital Kiev. In some rooms, the background radiation at 4 millisieverts per hour exceeds the norm allowed by Ukrainian legislation by 8,000 times. However, the threat is not limited to tailings and buildings from the windows of which radioactive dust is spread. Nowadays, Prydniprovsky itself resembles a landfill. Piles of scrap and empty tanks scattered all over the site are also the objects of radioactive emanation. 
But it's not only that. The shocking truth is that dozens of private businesses are currently operating on the site. Every day, more than 600 people are in radiation-contaminated areas, endangering themselves and everyone they come in contact with. Meanwhile, Kamyansky is living its life like many other Ukrainian cities. People go to work, rest, make plans for the future. Do they think about the danger that seems unperceivable at first sight? Do they realize the threat for future generations that lies behind their everyday nonchalance? Do we have the right to do nothing? When the price for our lightheartedness is our future, And will they forgive our inaction? The problem required immediate intervention so Ukraine turned to the European Union for help. As a result, a restoration program for the site was developed and the process of establishing a legal framework to address this problem was launched. In 2017, with a financial contribution of 3.5 million euros, the program entered a second phase. The aim was to provide isolation of the most contaminated premises, build protective fences for radioactively contaminated territories and buildings, and to carry out the general cleaning of the site. For now, the protective, controlled areas have been created around the largest tailings, the Western, Southeastern and Centralny Ya. Protective fences have been put around buildings where the technological cycle of uranium oxide concentrate production took place, such as buildings number 103 and number 104. Protective frames have been installed on windows that used to spread radioactive dust. Changing facilities have been established for radiological monitoring of workers who will carry out their tasks inside the controlled areas. A modern ventilation system has also been installed in State Enterprise Barriers Laboratory for dosimetry and radiation control to ensure proper radiation protection and safety. Although a wide range of tasks have already been completed, it is a mere droplet in the global process of transforming the territory of Prydniprovsky into a truly safe and secure place. The 
European Union has already commenced the third stage of support with further funding of 5.7 million euros in October 2021. This will bring solving the problem of Pridniprovsky one step closer. The European Union's long-term contribution to the restoration of the Pridniprovsky is not just a social initiative. This is a strategic vision of the future, which sees a long-term remediation. In cooperation with the European Union and others, Ukraine could turn these lands into environmentally clean areas, create new jobs and ensure favorable conditions for businesses that will lead to prosperity for the region.